So welcome to St Mark's Lutheran Church Caloundra. This sermon on the Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, is from John chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. And it sits in the context of the conversation that Jesus has with Nicodemus. And you'll hear a very familiar verse today. So from John chapter 3 verses 14 to 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So dear Lord, open our hearts and minds to hear your word and to see this word as truth. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. So John chapter 3, and of course we know verse 16 very well. John 3.16 and it's not an easy verse to ignore or pass over when it comes to preaching a sermon. However, this time round I'm drawn to the verses that follow chapter 3 verse 16 in particular verses 17 and 18 and also to a view of judgment that might not be very popular. So why is that? Well because We don't get to judge others when it comes to their relationship with God. We should then make us pause, take a breath when we want to judge someone else. Because don't we live in a world that likes to judge others and even thrives on it? This sin of superiority reigns supreme in our society. As if in the same situation we could do better as if in a similar circumstance we would make better decisions. And somehow the the fear of exposure of our own weakness controls our behaviour. We live in a world of distrust on every level. And you see it when plans and projects are constructed without real people in mind. Opinions proposed without knowing the whole truth. Conclusions drawn all too often with only blinkered and minimal information. And I'm not sure where to place the blame for that ethos in our culture. But then again, the very desire to place blame is an attempt to deflect our discomfort when we begin to acknowledge our own guilt or our own complacency. So we want to project it on someone else. And so the judgment of which John speaks is an important reminder of our for our day and time. But again, it's not a very popular notion of judgment. And so our response to the word made flesh, whether or not we recognise that Jesus is God, is a judgment we bring upon ourselves, like it or not. Because perhaps it's easier to be judged than to acknowledge that our actions, our behaviours, bring judgment on others. And so as a result, we have to take a long, hard look at ourselves. Why are we so eager to condemn others and somehow think that our condemnation is exempt? How are we so willing to withhold forgiveness to what extent that means that we ourselves are in desperate need of it? How are we so willing to sideline and push aside reconciliation when it necessitates a resolution with our own demons, our own struggles? 
See, perhaps there is a good news in all of this, believe it or not, because I hear freedom in this passage. Not that I'm freed from the judgment of others, for I will always be inclined towards condemnation. And such is the nature of human condition. And it seems, to me at least, that life in the church incurs more judgment than other professions. But again, I feel a certain sense of liberation that how I act, how I behave, how I respond is simultaneously a revelation of my character. It tells the truth about myself. That I will, when left to my devices, seek to judge others before I'm willing to shine a light on myself. And I need to hear this truth more often than I care to admit. And the response of others to God's revelation is not ours to control, only our own. And even then, how we react to God's presence is more often very inconsistent. And again, it might be a hard, tough pill to swallow, but it's a necessary one. So again, back in its context of this, these verses, these words from Jesus. In that context, the one who should have seen the truth standing before him Nicodemus couldn't, well at least at that moment. And so our evaluation of Nicodemus, we are forced to ask why? Why Nicodemus can't, can't see it? John doesn't give us an answer or an easy out, but he leaves us in our own moment of decision, deciding what we will make of Nicodemus in wondering how we might have responded given the same situation and scrambling to try to save ourselves. You see, here's the thing. In the end, John 3 verses 17 and 18 are the after effects, the after effects of our response to John 3.16. Whether or not we're willing to believe that God loves the world, and it might actually be true, the after effects is, after that, are we willing to live as if it simply has to be true? So hear it again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And the peace of God which passes all our human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and in him alone. Amen.